Well, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Steve Moss. I'm the pastor of Filed Christian Service Church and welcome to today's Sunday service. We're going to have a great time together, a great time in the Word and a great time in worship. So uh, join with us, have a wonderful time today. Uh, and we're going to just pass you over to Dave and Linda who are going to lead us in praise and worship and I'm going to bring the Word a bit later. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. together again in the spirit on the Lord's day, even if we can't be together physically. Let's give it the glory and the honor and the praise to his name. Revelation chapter 5. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was ten Yeah. 
beautiful beyond description. Oh, whether you kneel, whether you stand, whether you sit, whichever pose you might take for this last song that says you're beautiful beyond description, that says I stand in awe of you, whether you want to stand, whether you want to kneel, whether you want to bow, whether you even want to sit, but let's make sure that we give him the honour and the glory that's due his name, give him that worship from our hearts, because he's worthy. there this morning at lovely time and the prayer time as well and here we are coming to the word of God as I was preparing for this message today I felt the Lord speaking very very clearly to me I felt him saying to me uh, I don't want to bring a teaching series I don't want to uh, bring a, a preaching series what I really need to do, Steve, is to minister to my people. 
to my children. He said to me, I have known the struggles and the sufferings and the hardships over these recent weeks and months. And my heart, my heart has been broken for them. I have seen <clears throat> uh, their tears. I've seen their grief. I've seen uh, their suffering. And I am their father. And so I want to minister directly to them today. I want to share with them. I want to meet with them. I want to directly minister healing and restoration to my people, to my children. I am their dad. So I said, Father, I, I will do that. I, whatever you want, I will do. So this is a more personal, more intimate time uh, from my front room to your front room, really. Um, and the Lord is with you right now. You can't see him, but he's right with you, right there in your room. And he loves you. He loves you so much. You are the apple of his eye. And he has seen your struggles and your suffering and your loss. He has seen what you've lost in this time. And he wants to minister into that. In fact, he wants to bring restoration and healing today. That's his heart. That's what he told me he wants to do. And that's what we're going to do. So, Lord, I just pray that today, in this room, this brother, sister, who's watching this video, wherever they are, that they will meet with you today. They will know your personal presence and they will receive from you directly healing and restoration. This is called the road to restoration. And I pray that you will receive all that God has for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord told me to share with you a uh, an event that happened in the Gospels. It's covered in John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. And he was very specific. He said, he said, don't read it out. Don't preach verse to verse through it. He said, I want to take my children on a journey uh, through this road to restoration in what happened with Lazarus and with Jesus and Martha and Mary. I want to take them through this step by step. And that's what he's going to do by his spirit. So, we're just going to walk through that story. We're going to share it and let God speak to you step by step through it as he brings his truth and as he brings his revelation, as he shares his heart and as he ministers, meets with you and ministers that healing and restoration. I think you probably know about Martha and Mary and Lazarus. They were very close friends of Jesus. They were not his disciples, but Jesus spent time with them. Uh, we read that he visited them, uh, Martha and Mary. He spoke to them and with Lazarus. And you know the story, Martha was busy serving and Mary was sitting at Jesus's feet. And I'm sure Lazarus was there as well. And Jesus said to Martha, 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 just slow down. Uh, Mary's chosen the better thing. Come and listen to me. And he he stayed there. He loved them. They were his friends and he ministered his word to them. They were very, very close to him. But what happened was that while Jesus was on his many journeys and he was away from them, um, something went wrong. Lazarus became sick. In fact, he became progressively more and more sick and more and more weak. And we find in John's Gospel that Jesus receives a message from Martha and Mary to say, Lazarus, whom you love, your great friend, is sick. They, of course, the ladies, the sisters, are assuming that Jesus is going to come and heal Lazarus. He's going to drop whatever he's doing because um, Lazarus is sick and he loves Lazarus and he heals everyone and Jesus is the healer so the ladies send the message and they're confident that he's going to come maybe maybe you've been feeling a little bit like that in these recent weeks and months that in this lockdown in this period of strange difficult times where it seems that 
You've been separated from so many things, separated from maybe your family, separated from your friends, uh, separated from your church, separated from your business, from your workplace, that, that you've been pushed aside, you've been isolated, uh, you've not been able to fellowship, you've not been able to worship like you used to. And it, it's, like, it's like everything's gone far away, everything's become distant. It's like everything's changed. Martha and Mary were feeling like that. They were struggling with a brother, Lazarus, who was sick and getting more and more and more weak. Uh, and Jesus wasn't with them. They were actually on their own, in their own home. The disciples were not there. Jesus wasn't there. Uh, he was a long way away. They didn't feel his immediate presence. They didn't even feel maybe very connected to him. And so they sent a message to him. They said, Lazarus is sick. I'm sure he'll come. Hallelujah. You know, I've, I've seen in meditating, and the Lord showed me a, a wonderful picture of the trio of Lazarus and Martha and Mary. It's a picture of our whole person. You see, Thessalonians says we are a three-part person, body, soul, and spirit. Our body is this physical body. It acts and it moves and it does things. And that is kind of represented by Martha, who was very busy and very active when Jesus came to stay with them. You remember? Um, Mary, on the other hand, sat at Jesus's feet and Mary was connected with Jesus. Mary was one with Jesus. Mary was close to Jesus. And Mary represents our spirit, our spirit man, where the Holy Spirit lives and where we meet with God. And Lazarus represents our soul man. Our soul man is our emotions and our will and our thoughts and our mind. So we have body, soul and spirit. And what was precious to Martha and Mary, Lazarus represents something in our heart, something in our emotions Maybe something in our mind and our thinking. Something that in this lockdown, in this period of months, has grown weaker and weaker. It seems to have drifted away. Maybe it's our hope. Maybe it's your hope. Maybe it's your drive and energy. Maybe it's your sense of vision. Maybe it's, it's your peace. Maybe your joy, your joy in the Lord has, has somehow grown weaker and seem to drift away from you because you're not close to church anymore you're not close to your friends anymore you're not being close to your family maybe Jesus has felt far away and, and like Martha and Mary you felt something in you something precious to you maybe even your love for God and your relationship with God has has drifted uh, maybe I don't know maybe your faith has been tested maybe there's been hurts that have happened during this time. Maybe you've suffered grief or suffering or loss and, and, and the good things, the things that are precious to you have grown weaker and weaker and weaker. Jesus receives the message and stays where he is for several days. And Lazarus dies. What is your Lazarus? Is it your hope? Is it? Your peace? Is it your well-being? Is it your faith? Is it your passion? What is your Lazarus? What is it that has sickened and seems to have died? I'm sure it's something. That's what God is telling me. All of us seem to have lost something. It seems to have died. It seems to have gone. Jesus knows this. And he knew that Lazarus had died. In fact, he told his disciples, Lazarus is dead. But he makes this incredible statement. One of the most hopeful statements in the whole Bible. And he makes this statement to you this morning. He says, Lazarus is asleep. But I am going to wake him. <laughs> He's dead. But I am going to wake him. That's a word from the Lord for you today. Your Lazarus may be 
dead or feel asleep, gone. But Jesus says, I'm coming to wake him. Don't worry, I'm coming to wake him. Of course, for Martha and Mary, Lazarus was gone. And they had buried him and put him in the tomb. And Jesus hadn't come. And it was all over now. They were going to have to live their life without Lazarus. And maybe you've come to that place where you say, actually, I don't know, that, that joy, that zeal, that energy, it just seems to have gone. But I'll keep going. I'll, 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 I'll live life without that. I'll, I'll keep going. I'll kind of accommodate it and keep going. Well, here's where the story changes. Jesus came to visit Bethany. And Mary found that he was coming. Uh, sorry, not Mary, Martha. Martha heard that Jesus was coming. And Martha takes the first step to restoration. This is your first step. It said, when she heard Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Your first step is what you're doing right now in your own front room. You come to Jesus. You find him. You seek for him. You do whatever you need to do. You go to your own front room. You go to your private place. You go for a walk. You go for a drive. You do whatever is needed, but you get close to Jesus. You find Jesus because he's coming to you. And you see, Jesus is coming to you, but you come to him as well. And there's a meeting point together, him and you. That's where you are right now. Jesus is with you by his spirit. He's right with you in your front room. He's right with you now. Step one, come and find Jesus. Martha did it. You do it. And when Martha came to Jesus, I believe that when she found him, that he sat down with her. He, he just came and sat next to her and kind of like what the Lord's doing now by his spirit. Jesus comes and sits next to you. And Martha says to Jesus, Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. I know that. But. I know that God will do anything you ask him. Come to Jesus and tell him, tell him what you've lost. Look, Jesus, right now, tell him, Lord, I've, I've lost my, I've lost my hope, I've lost my, my, my desire, I've lost my passion, I, I have, I've lost it. If you'd been here, if I'd been close to you, if the church had kept going on, if we hadn't had this virus, if, oh, if the lockdown hadn't happened, it would have been okay. If, you, if I'd have been that close to you, it would have been okay. But, but, but I do know, I know that God will do whatever you ask him. I know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to Mary, uh, to Martha, he said, Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha says, yes, I know that. I, I know that he will rise on the last day. This is the second step. On both of those occasions, on both of those times, Martha speaks out what she knows. She speaks out what she believes. And the second step, what God is saying to you is, calls you by name, Steve, Mary, John, what do you believe? Tell me what you believe. Recently I was ministering to someone, and I've done this many times, who had, had lost so much ground, was struggling in so, so many ways. And, and I was on the phone to this person and I said, tell me, what do you believe? Not what you feel. Not what you're experiencing, not what's happening to you. What do you believe right now? And this person said, well, I believe. I believe that Jesus is God and I believe he died on the cross for my sin and I believe he rose again. And I said, bless you, bless you, bless you. That's your starting place for healing and restoration. That's your starting place. Here's your second step. Here's your 
next step on the road to healing and restoration. Speak out what you believe. Tell God what you know. Tell me now. But tell Jesus, what do you know? What do you believe? Just tell God right now. I'm going to do it for myself. You do it for you. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I believe that you love me and I believe you died for me. I believe that, I believe that you've saved me. I do believe those things. That's what you believe. Isn't that what you know? Isn't that true for you no matter what you feel? Yes, you've lost your Lazarus. There are, this thing has gone from you. Maybe your Lazarus isn't recent. Maybe it's past abuse and hurt from years ago. And he's in the tomb now. It's been stolen from you and taken from you through hurts. But you can still state what you believe. Step two. Hallelujah. Martha shares this with Jesus. And then Jesus makes this amazing statement. This astonishing declaration. And I picture him leaning forward. And he says this, he says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. I, I am the resurrection and the life. What was Jesus saying there? Well, he was saying, I am resurrection. What's resurrection? Resurrection is something that is being dead, being brought back to life. Resurrection is something that is finished, it's gone, it's dead, being called forth back into life. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. It, I don't do resurrection. I am resurrection. What is he saying here? What is he saying to Martha? What is he saying to you right now in your front room? What is Jesus saying to you right now? He's calling you by name. He's sitting next to you and he says, listen, I am resurrection. Where I am, there is resurrection. Where I go, I bring resurrection. Who I am is resurrection. So if you're sitting next to me now, you're sitting next to resurrection. If you're listening to my voice now, you're listening to resurrection. Where I am, things are brought back to life. Where I am, things are called forth back into life. It's just who I am. So you get close to me, you stay close to me, and you're going to experience resurrection. Isn't that a great word? Isn't that an amazing word for you? That Jesus says, I know you're Lazarus. I know what you've lost. I know what's in the tomb. I know what's died. I know all of that. But guess what? You believe. You believe in me. You believe in salvation. You've spoken it out. You've told me. But here's my word to you. I am resurrection and life. So where I am and where you sit right now in your front room, resurrection's going to happen. Resurrection's going to happen. Something's going to be called back to life. Why? Because I'm back now, says Jesus. Because I'm here now with you, says Jesus. Because it's all about me. Can you hear that word from the Lord to you? I am the resurrection and the life. And he says, do you believe this? Do you believe this, Martha? And Jesus says, calls you by name. John, Mary, whatever your name is, calls to me and says, Steve, do you believe this? Do you believe it? And I say, yes. Here's your next step. Do you believe that Jesus is resurrection? Do you believe he can call forth that Lazarus back? Do you believe he can bring that peace and joy and hope back? Do you believe that? 
will say it now. Yes, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I want to sing and kind of minister to you in this place where Jesus speaks out. Says to you, I am the resurrection. I want you to close your eyes and just listen to this verse of a song, a worship song, which is the word of the Lord for you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. be still and know Martha declared what she knows you've spoken out what you know and Jesus says be still and know that I am God that I am the resurrection and I'm coming I'm coming to call forth your Lazarus again hallelujah the third step I am the resurrection and Martha called Mary back to with Jesus and to meet with him and Mary said if you'd been here I know he would have been well so Jesus had both Martha and Mary with him now and you in your spirit and in your body those two parts of you are with Jesus right now and he said, where have they laid him? So they took Jesus to the tomb to where Lazarus uh, was laid. And it says, when Jesus saw the grief, when he saw the loss, when he saw the tomb, he wept. He wept. And you know, Jesus has cried for you. He's wept for you. He's seen He's seen your struggles. He's seen your loss. And it's broken his heart. It really has. He loves you. He's seen this journey you've been on. He's seen that hope or passion leak away and, 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 and grow weaker and weaker and eventually just be lost to you. He's seen it being taken in the tomb. And he's cried for you. He's wept for you. You are his. The father has cried because you're his child. You're his son and daughter. You're his. He wept. But his word was, show me where he is. Show me where you have put him in the tomb, where you've laid him. And this is the next step. He could have called forth Lazarus from where he was, from outside Bethany. But no, he said, you need to show me where you buried Lazarus. You need to show me the tomb. And this is a word from the Lord for you. This is part of your healing and restoration. Jesus says to you today, I want you to show me. I want you to take me. I want you to share with me where you began to lose your faith or your passion, your Lazarus. Where did it go? Where did that peace go. Take me to that place. I want you to do that now. I want you to tell the Lord now where it went, where it grew weak, what you were struggling with. Just share it with him. 
Just take him through that time of struggle and the time that you lost. Maybe it's recently, maybe it's from years ago where you were hurt and abused. Just take him to that place. Will you do that now? Just do it now. Just speak it out and tell him what happened. This is your next step. This is what he needs you to do. There it is. That's where it went. That's where it disappeared. That's where it died on you. And so they took Jesus to the tomb. And then he said something kind of strange. And he says the same to you. He said, roll away the stone. Of course, the stone was there to seal the opening of the tomb. Martha said to him, Lord, um, you know, if we do that, he's been in the tomb four days. He's going to stink. He's going to smell. And Jesus said, do it. Did you not believe what I told you? Here's the next step. This is your fifth step. You're going to have to roll away the stone before Jesus is going to call forth your Lazarus. What does that mean? What does that mean, roll away the stone? Well, they put the stone there to seal the tomb. They rolled the stone in place to seal up the tomb so that the dead man is covered and everything's settled and it's defined. And I believe we have our own stone that we roll over the tomb of our Lazarus. What does that mean? Well, whether that hope is gone or the peace is gone or the passion is gone or the love is gone or even the faith is gone because of your struggles and that's died now. You've rolled a stone over it. What does that mean? Well, it means maybe you have, you've lost some faith. You've become angry or bitter. Or maybe you've lost your trust of people. Or maybe you've lost your confidence. Or maybe you've just become resigned to the fact that that's where it is now and the finish, it's all over and finished. And that's your stone. Maybe your stone is resignation or, or bitterness. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe it's lack of trust. Maybe it's hardness in your heart. Maybe it's saying that's the end now. And that's sealed it. That's settled the matter. That's finished with it now. Jesus says... You've got to roll that away now. Come on now, you, you've got to take that bitterness or anger or, or resignation or lack of faith or doubt or lack of trust. He's not going to do this. He says, you've got to roll that away now. I'm not doing this for you. I'm, the Lord says, I want you to do it now. And I'm asking you to do that as the voice of the Lord. Will you now, and I'll give you a moment to do that, Will you now roll away that stone? Turn away. Turn away from the anger and bitterness. Repent if you need to. Roll it away. Just do that now. The Lord is with you. Jesus is right here with you. The Father is here with you. They love you. You can do this. They're right here with you. Will you do that now? Will you do that now? I'll just be quiet while you do that. He hears your prayer. He's heard your prayer. Amen. Now the tomb is open. Jesus stepped forward, it says in John's Gospel. And he said, Father, I know you're with me. I know you're with me. And you always hear me. And then he speaks in a loud voice and he says, Lazarus, come forth. Come out of the tomb. Jesus, the resurrection, commands because he's the king and he rules over all. 
he commands Lazarus to come forth. And Lazarus is dead. He's in his grave clothes in the darkness and in the tomb. And the miracle happens. Lazarus breathes again in the darkness. Lazarus sits up and stands inside that tomb. We can't see him yet, but he responds to the call of resurrection and life. You see, Jesus now says to your Lazarus, hope, come forth. Faith, come forth. Passion, be alive again. Healing, come out of the tomb. Wholeness, come forth. He calls forth your Lazarus. He calls forth your Lazarus. He is the king and his word rules over everything. And your Lazarus is waking up now. Your Lazarus is alive again. Your hope is alive. And sitting up and standing and is coming out of the tomb. Would you close your eyes? I'm going to sing the second verse of this worship song and let the healing of God and the restoration of God come right now. I am the Lord that he calling forth your Lazarus now just close your eyes and just know Jesus is calling forth your hope his eyes have opened he's sitting up in the tomb in that dark place he's coming back he's raising up he's walking out of that tomb he's alive again he's alive again he's alive again Receive the healing, receive the peace, receive the joy back, receive it all, receive it all. Lazarus, come forth. I am the Lord that he loved thee. He's moving right now. I am the Lord that he I am the Lord that he loved me. Hallelujah. Open, open your eyes. Hey, hey, the hope's coming back. The hope's alive because Jesus is right there with you. Your Lazarus in your soul, man, that emotion, that passion, that which was lost is alive again alive again it's not fully completely restored yet it's a little bit fragile at the moment when Lazarus came out of that tomb he was still in his grave clothes he was unable to move very far or very fast he was alive and he was fully well he was fully healthy but he was not able to move he was still in the grave clothes and Jesus said take the grave clothes off him and he says to you, take the grave clothes off him. Take the memories of his loss. Take the memories of what happened to you. Take them away. Take them off him. And it says, let him go. Let him loose. Let him back into your life. That's the final step. Step six was Lazarus come forth. And the final step is loose him and let him go. Let him grow back into your life. Let him grow strong in you again. Let the hope grow. It's fragile at the moment. It's small at the moment, but it's alive. It's alive and you're restored and you're healed. You're healed and restored because Jesus, the resurrection, 
has called forth your Lazarus. So trust him now. Trust him to fill completely, finish the restoration. But know that it's back. And you can move again and be free again and grow again. It's back. That's what God wants to do today in your front room. That's what he's done right now. He's called forth your Lazarus back. There's a third verse. This is our response in this old worship song. The first one was, Be still and know I am God, the word of the Lord. The second was, I am the Lord that heals you, the word of the Lord. The third one is my response. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. I wonder if you can sing this with me. Sing this to your Jesus, who's called forth your Lazarus again. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Love him and thank him in this song. Because your Lazarus is back. You are healed. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You indeed are our healer. You are our resurrection and our life. You restore me and restore us. And we stand in this place today with our hope back, with our Lazarus back, with our joy back, because you called it forth. I love you, Lord. I worship you. I thank you for what you've done for me and for the person who's watching this video. In thee, O Lord, sing it with me. I put my trust in thee, O Lord. I put my trust in thee. to the end of our time now I hope you can feel God's presence I certainly can I'm going to finish this time with the priestly blessing that we've been learning about and with a little bit of amplification and uh, on what that actually means every statement and this is my priestly blessing to you the Lord bless you may the Lord God Almighty in all his goodness, pour upon you his gifts and his favour. The Lord keep you. The Lord God Almighty protect you, draw you close and keep you safe. May he make his face to shine upon you. The Lord God Almighty pour out upon you his glory, his magnificence, his power and his radiance, and his life. And the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord bestow upon you his great grace and favour. All the gifts and resources of heaven be upon you. The Lord turn his face toward you. The Lord bring the full focus of his attention upon you and share his love, and his heart with you. And the Lord give you peace. May the Lord give you his peace, wholeness and well-being. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And now David and Linda are going to lead us in our last song. Bless you. The Lord's done a great work today. Restoration and healing. 
bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, peaceful week. The Father's done his work. Amen. Amen. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Join with us as we sing.
moment.